we know that once they get here, they see what we're all about and they see the real Laredo, they see the hospitality in, in, in all the locals, all the people are happy to, to welcome the visitor. Once they get here and once they have the opportunity to experience a destination, their idea completely changes and they become our ambassadors. Welcome again, everyone, to another episode of the Destination Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Stoker. Uh, I'm here with a special guest today, and I'm really excited to have her on. I had the opportunity to go visit her destination about a month ago and was blown away uh, by her destination. Uh, the, the expectations versus reality for me were so different, uh, and, and it really opened my eyes to, to a lot of both issues and opportunity that we'll talk about today. Uh, the destination is Laredo, Texas, and we have Eileen Ramos, who is the director of the tourism office in Laredo. Eileen, we're so glad to have you on today. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll, we'll get into Laredo in just a bit, but there's a couple of questions that I like to ask just to get things going. And uh, I'll, I'll start with those. First of all, if you could go anywhere in the world, you know, what, what is your dream destination? My dream destination is anywhere where I can find arts, culture, and really good food. Arts, culture, and really good food. I, th you know what? Those are some good requirements right there. I, th I, I think that's great. Is there, is there somewhere, you know, that you've researched, that you've heard about the art, culture, and food that, that maybe you'd like to try? A uh, couple of places that I've already been to um, that I really like with those, with those um, elements are um, out of country. I love London. Vancouver are two of my favorite places in the world. Houston in Texas is wonderful. Um, and other destinations that I, I want to visit that are on my list is Portugal and Spain. I've heard the food in Spain is amazing. Oh man, I've I've heard that too. I haven't heard a lot about the food in Portugal. Uh, what what have you heard there? Um, especially the, the 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 food that's local to the Azores. I've heard really good things about, and so I'm excited to try some of that. Uh, what what is your so okay so dining? You know you 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 look at food as you're choosing a destination. What what's your jam? What kind of food do you love? Um. Anything. I, we just traveled, my husband and I just traveled to Houston, for example, for his birthday. And we had from Mexican, like native Oaxacan food to Thai to Italian, American fare all in one weekend. So anything that looks good and appetizing and wow. uh, even if it's a little bit strange, but uh, we get something new, we're up for That's great. And, and so it's, it's really about trying something new and exploring new foods. Uh, not so much as it is like a specific type of food that you want to go try. Exactly. Anything that that's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm crazy for curry, any type of curry, any color. Um, so that's one of my favorite foods. But anything that looks interesting, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Uh, in, in Mexico, I had a chance to um, take some, some co-workers and we had um, uh, grasshoppers with uh, guacamole um, and some octopus and different forms of uh, cabrito, which is a uh, goat. And so it was all very interesting. Okay. I want to go back. You said grasshoppers with guacamole. Is that correct? Yes. They're delicious. They're <laughs> delicious. My mouth water is just telling you about them. Wow. Okay. So that you would probably have to get me in the right mood to try grasshoppers with guacamole, but with an endorsement like you just gave, Maybe I do have to give it a try. Where did you try that? that? I had those in Monterrey, Mexico. Wow. Wow. Okay. We'll add grasshoppers to the list of, of delicacies that I need to try. That's great. Yes, definitely. And escamoles, which is uh, the eggs of the red ant in Mexico. That's a delicacy also. And they're really, really tasty and delicious. So that's something that you should add to your list too. Red ant eggs. Yes, es Wow, we should turn this into a dining podcast. <laughs> this is some unique stuff. You can, you can, and, and we have some unique eats, and we'll talk about Loreto later. But uh, we have some unique eats here in Loreto, and, and uh, I actually have some pictures in, in Loreto Foodies is our my record of everything that I've eaten here, and uh, you can go through that and. 
just check out some of the stuff that we have here. Wow. Okay. All right. It sounds like we didn't we didn't get enough in when we came down to Laredo. We we definitely ate at several places. Mm-hmm. Uh, La India was amazing when, when we went there, but uh, it sounds like I need to try a few more things. Yes, there's there's plenty to, to try and experience in the culinary area here in Laredo. Great. Well, let's talk about Laredo a little bit. I, I first, uh, I want to understand a little bit about your background and how you ended up in the tourism industry, and then we'll dive into the destination. Good. Um, well, my my background is in marketing and customer service and logistics. Um, I came to Laredo about 10 years ago. I first visited the destination as a destination, as, as I came in as a visitor. Um, I just loved it. My husband is, is uh, born and raised here in Laredo, and we decided to stay here, and it's just wonderful. And my whole life, I've been involved with hospitality. My grandfather worked for a tourism publication in Mexico, and so I always had in my mind that I wanted to work in hospitality. Um, In the first few years of my career, I was dedicated to marketing and customer service with some big corporations and and based out of of Mexico, but big U.S. and Canadian corporations. And when I came to Laredo and saw the opportunity to do what I had always wanted to do, which is hospitality, um, I couldn't be happier to get to get into that that industry um, finally. And so it's been um, a 10 year journey in the making. And I'm so excited of all the potential that we have of everything that we have here in Laredo. And and I'm excited about um, embracing um, all our culture, our offerings and and show it to, to everybody. Great, great. Yeah, it sounds like tourism's in your blood. It was destiny for you to end up in this role here. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, and I, I, sh- I got to get to know the destination first as a visitor. And so for me, it was getting that sense of what Loretto has to offer for people coming in that helped me. And it's, it keeps helping me uh, with, with getting myself in, in the visitor shoes. That makes sense. Well, let's talk about Laredo. Tell me about your destination and what makes it unique. Well, we're located in mile marker one of Highway 35, which for Texas folks, it's, uh, it's a well-known highway. It goes across the state. Uh, well, mile marker one and then just two hours north is San Antonio and then Austin and then Dallas. And then you go on all the way to Manitoba, Canada. And so we're number one inland port in the nation. And so anything, 48% of everything that goes into the country in terms of goods comes through our port. And we are a bicultural destination. Um, we, we have a lot of the Mexican culture and Hispanic culture uh, very alive in our destination. The food, the uh, combination of the language. Um, you hear um, people obviously speaking in English, but then you, you, you hear that Spanish inserted in certain uh, places. And so... It makes it a very unique destination. We have Mexican blocks of Mexican import shops, and uh, the culture because it's it's alive. It's it's makes it very real as a as a bicultural destination. Yeah, and I think I think that's one of the things that really blew me away when I came and visited Laredo. You know, it's a border town, but I think outside of the local Texas area, I think the perception of, of Laredo is probably a little bit more what I would call cowboy Texas. Uh, if that's fair to say, I think, I think a lot of people picture, you know, uh, just ranches, cowboy hats and Western culture and that type of thing. And it wasn't that at all. When, when I came, in fact, uh, I was blown away by, you talk about the bicultural aspect of Laredo. And I really think that's something that makes Laredo unique, there were moments when when I felt like I was visiting Mexico and yet I was on this side of the border, right? And and I thought that was a really unique and interesting thing uh, in in visiting Laredo. And so uh, the culture there and and the ability to you know you talk about the different languages uh, that pop in and out. You know I, I noticed when I was there. 
that there are words that just make more sense using a Spanish word instead of an English word. So you'll just insert it here and there. And I just thought that was so fun and, and interesting when, when we visited. Yes, and we have also that because, as you said, we're, we're on this side of the border. And so we also have the, that sense of patriotism, that sense of, of, of being proud of being an American city. And so we have events like webca- like Washington's birthday celebration. The people come here and say, well, you're so close to the border. How come you have a, uh, a whole month celebration uh, for Washington, George Washington? And so that's another part of that makes us unique. Um, this celebration is 127 years old, and it celebrates that. It celebrates that we are bicultural. It celebrates that we leave our Mexican heritage and our Hispanic heritage every day, but that we're also... Um, proud to be a, a, an American city and proud to be part part of the U.S. So it's that those those two elements that combine make Laredo a very unique location. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that the George Washington celebration is a month long. If there's one thing I learned when I was there is you guys know how to throw a party. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when we were there, we went to the Sister Cities Festival, which is the celebration of the two cultures, and I thought it was. So cool to see that, you know, at the beginning to kick off the the celebration, you had the Mexican National Anthem and the American National Anthem, both performed by a mariachi band, which was, I've never heard a mariachi band perform the American National Anthem, and I thought it was so cool <laughs> to, to hear that. And then to see the celebration of the the two cultures that really come together in Laredo, it was it was really amazing to see because I think in in a time that our country needs a message of unity and love and kindness, that celebration really embodied that for me. And that's that's what Laredo is. Laredo is a place where where we embody that culture, that bi-culturalness and chat with the women everything from sister cities to Washington's birthday celebration and everything in between. Um, then we have elements like the Jalapeno Festival, but we also have elements during the same week, like the um, air show where you see uh, all these wonderful planes, all, all this wonderful display of vehicles. And, and we have military planes coming in to show the different elements and you have those two elements, and again, that's what makes Laredo a very unique destination. You don't you don't see that in many places. No, in fact, I, I've I've never seen it anywhere else, even close to to the way that it is in Laredo. I one thing that I saw immediately is that the outside perception of Laredo compared to what Laredo actually is are two very different things. What challenges have you had? with kind of the way Laredo is portrayed in the national media or in some of the, uh, you know, previous campaigns or challenges that that you've experienced? As a destination and as a tourism um, entity for the city, sometimes for us it's difficult to fight that perception, Um, the perception of the the rhetoric and the ideas that that are, are out there. For us, we've found that the best way to get our message through is bringing people to the destination. We know that once they get here, they see what we're all about and they see the real Laredo, they see the hospitality and, and, and all the locals, all the people are happy to, to welcome the visitor. Um, they see places that they didn't uh, quite have had an idea that, that existed or events that didn't have an idea that existed. like. Um, WBC uh, and, and Sister Cities and the Birding Festival. Uh, the Birding Festival is a great uh, example of this. We have people coming from all over the U.S., even Canada, um, Northern Territories, and they come to Laredo and it's something uh, eye-opening for them to be able to bird alongside the Rio Grande or kayak and bird alongside the Rio Grande on the Rio Grande. And so once they get here and once they have the opportunity to experience a destination, their idea completely changes and they become our ambassadors. So that's been the way that we've, we've found that, that 
we have a better success rate when we have those ambassadors, those people that share the the reality of Laredo, other uh, rather than the rhetoric. Yeah, yeah, and and really, it's true. Once once somebody actually comes to the destination, they realize that it's completely different. And, and I know that you know news outlets, for example, sensationalism gets eyeballs, you know, and that's that's what they're looking for. So when they put the Fox News reporter out there in a bulletproof vest and and that doesn't represent at all what what Laredo is. I mean, I, I went to the outlet shops the, that are right there on the border uh, and, you know, I felt as safe in, in Laredo uh, as, as I do anywhere. But combating some of that rhetoric that, that you talk about is not an easy thing to do. But I think it's such a huge opportunity to combat that because, once again, I go back to the message of unity and peace and togetherness that uh, that Laredo has in their culture. And I think it's I think it's a message that, you know, everybody needs right now. So uh, let's talk a little bit about specifically the culture aspect of Laredo. In your eyes, how do you advertise a culture? I think that's a difficult thing to articulate as you're as you're structuring a brand and I know we're working on some things right now to do that, but in your eyes, uh, how how do you do that? I believe it's is focusing on the authenticity of the destination, uh, focusing on things uh, as simple as the food. I think the food is a great vehicle to um, show other people um, the culture, and so as as you heard at the beginning, I'm 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 a big fan of of um, tasting and and looking for for that uh, unique element in food, and I think because I believe that it's a great vehicle for for learning more about a culture, about a destination, and uh, in our case, I think that that represents a lot of what Laredo is is that uniqueness that. Um, blend of two cultures, uh, a, a blend of, of two cuisines, um, and I believe that's that's one of the vehicles. There's others, but I believe that that that's a good vehicle to show people. And you saw it when you came here. We were talking, and as soon as you had the opportunity to go to La India and see that element of the culture, you could tell that there was something different here. Absolutely, and I love the food analogy because it's like. If somebody could just get a taste, mm-hmm. right, of, of what Laredo really is, uh, then then their opinion would, would absolutely shift and change and they'd see it for what it really is. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you made the decision to rebrand. And I think the destination has gone through a couple of different brand situations that have kind of led to here. So what led to your decision to rebrand the destination and what are you trying to accomplish? Well, there's there's a few things that I, I believe as a marketer, um, by trade and, 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 and by career, I believe that we need to refresh our product every so often. And so even like like a product that you buy at the grocery store, right? The packaging changes and, and you see a different packaging uh, every so often and, and it gives it a little bit of oomph to the to the product. It, and so that that belief is what has taken us to it's time for us um, to re- repackage, like show ourselves a little bit uh, on a different light and show the people what we're really all about. Um, and also, I believe that it's time for us to tell our story. For the longest time, we've, we've let other uh, entities, other um, outlets, other people tell our story. And it's time for us to go out there and, and tell people what, what we're about and, and what we have to offer from our perspective. And from, uh, as I mentioned, our, our biggest uh, champions are the people that have been here to Loreto. And so having those voices tell the story together with along us, I think that it's something that's needed so that people know what we're really about. I think I think that's really insightful what you said there that there's a lot of people talking about Laredo, right? A lot of people have attempted to tell the story whether now or in the past and you said it's time for us to tell our story and I think that is not just for your destination, I think for every destination. I I think 
if you look at what you're doing and ask yourself, am I controlling the narrative or are other people controlling our story? I think it's going to really help you to know if you need a big shift in your messaging, uh, because if you don't have control of your narrative, then then you don't have control over anything. And and so I love I love that message of of you know what other people have told our story and now it's our turn and and I'm really excited to see that unfold. Uh, us too. We're really excited to see Loretto in the eyes of of our visitor. And now with social media and content generation and, and our visitor being able to tell the story, we're even more excited because, as, as, I, as I mentioned, our visitor is our biggest champion. If you've come to Laredo, you have that perspective of what Laredo is, is all about. And so that content that you generate as a visitor is key for us to spread the word and that together with the message that's being offered from our tourism office, I think that it's going to drive that point to people that were not what they've heard in other messages before. Great. And and how do you think, you know, if, if successful in changing the narrative and, and telling the story effectively, what impact do you think it, it'll have not only on, on Laredo as a destination, but nationally, what do you think that impact can be? I think that the perception, I think people have um, only one side of the story, if you will, um, of what yeah. the border and what Laredo is. And so giving them uh, the opportunity to learn more about uh, a, a place that it's very far away um, from in their minds and it, it physically from a lot of people. If you think of somebody that's located in, I don't know, in, 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 the, the, in Chicago, for example, Uh, or in Minnesota, they might not be very familiar with what the border is and, and the challenges and the opportunities and the, all the things that, that we have to offer. And so if we um, send this message out, they will have the opportunity to see the other side, um, the positive side, the, the, the place uh, where we live, where we work, where we have fun. And so that will give them a different idea of what the border is about and not only the uh, what's told in, in the news, which is focused on, on, on real issues and, and real situations, but that doesn't tell the whole story about the, the city and about the destination. Yeah, and I, I think that probably goes for, you know, border towns in general, uh, because I think I think there's kind of a bad rap in, in several of those destinations. And I think changing that narrative will not only improve the the you know national narrative for for Laredo but also help people kind of see that other side of the story like you're talking about. So mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense. Uh rebranding is is no small task. Uh it, it's a lot of work. Uh and I I just want to ask you to share for our listeners what that process is going to look like for you over the next several months. Well, we're first of all we're super excited about the rebrand. It's it's um, something that we embraced as a, a department, as a city, and I think that our locals are um, looking forward to seeing the city look more like a destination. Not that we don't look like a destination right now, but that that little uh, makeover it's always good, and so everybody's really excited about it. And so the process for us is going through through every step from the side visit with, with all of you to every step of the process, looking at what our message is, looking at what the challenges is. And that's one of the biggest reasons why um, we wanted that perspective of, of somebody that was uh, from out of Laredo, um, because we wanted that perspective from somebody that is a potential visitor, somebody that's not... Because we all see our cities with love goggles, right? Because we love our city, because we love the, the place where we live and we love what we have here. But we want to see what attracts the visitor, what the visitor likes about our destination, which could be different than what makes it a great place to live. And so that's part of the process of the running to make sure that we had that perspective and kind of like go from there. And what we've seen with uh, the information that we've gotten and 
and including for us it was very important to include the PR element and the media and like all the different uh, parts of it because we wanted to be a very well-rounded exercise for it to have a great result. I, and I think that's the right approach. So I think making sure that you're looking at all of the touch points, right, that, that you can have with the outside world uh, and not not just looking at it. Like, for example, a rebrand is not just a design change, exactly. right? It's it's examining all different facets of your brand and making sure that they're consistent and that they communicate the message that you want them to communicate. And, you know, you mentioned hey, we wanted an outside perspective. Sometimes we look at our, <laughs> you, you call them love goggles, which I, th- I think is great. Uh, sometimes we look at our, our own city through love goggles. Uh, and I, I think a better, or, or a better, I, I, I think one of the interesting things that you've decided to do is say, hey, we want this outside perspective so that somebody's coming at it from the view of the visitor as opposed to a stakeholder and I think that's an important uh, delineation to make as you're considering a rebrand. Uh, you know, rebranding yourself is one of the hardest. We've had to do it even as an advertising agency. We've had to rebrand ourselves. And it was 10 times harder than rebranding one of the many businesses and, and destinations that we've done over the years. So it's just kind of funny that if you're in it, it's definitely a, a difficult exactly. thing and, to and, do. And as you mentioned, rebranding is not only the logo, the, the design, the, it's not that, it's, it's much more to it. And so we've had, we had to do the homework before uh, starting the project to explain um, to people that are not necessarily involved in, in, in a marketing side of a corporation or, or an organization, we had to explain, this is not just the logo. We're not just changing the logo. We're not just changing the color and the picture in the ad. This is much more. This is this is about uh, those elements, how the logo and the, the creative elements are going to look uh, and how are they're going to impact the wayfinding signage in the city. How are they going to impact the message? How are how is the the visitor going to navigate the destination? So it's much more than just changing a logo or a design. Totally agree. I totally agree. Thank you. Uh, I. I think we probably are kind of winding down here. We we could talk for hours. I I love Laredo, so I could, I could talk about Laredo for a long time. But I want to maybe just if you wouldn't mind touching on what's next for Laredo. What do you see on the you know what's the one year plan, and maybe then you know in five years, what do you see for Laredo? What I see for Laredo is. Um, creating a more visitor friendly destination because our, we love our visitor, but right now we're lacking some of those elements. Like I mentioned, like our way visit, uh, wayfinding signage, like um, kiosk information kiosk. So we want to make sure that we do everything that we can, that when we have our, our destination rebranded, that we put all those elements in that are going to make it so much easier for the visitor to navigate. That's what I want to see in the next year, two years. Um, in five years, I want to see a destination that um, the visitor knows about, that they're looking forward to visit, that we get more people from um, different places in the United States uh, that come to Laredo that that have uh, a real idea of what we're all about. Um, we are, just as we're bicultural, we, we, we also have a lot of visitors from Mexico, and so and we have a lot of visitors that come for business. And so being number one inland port, we have a lot of business travelers. So something that I would also like to see is that business traveler converting into a leisure traveler at a higher rate um, that they know and they um, um, have all the information about the, what the destination has to offer. And so that we have that higher rate of business traveler bringing their family after their trip or um, staying for a few more days to get to know the the destination as a whole. So those are some of the things that I that I want to see in the next few years here in, in the destination. And um, I love Laredo. I, I, I it's it's my heart is here and my heart is is in this product as as 
I want to show it to everybody. I want everybody to fall in love with it. And so we we want this to be part of that uh, that this campaign, this rebrand. We want to show our our love for our city, and we want everybody to fall in love with it too. Awesome, and and I know they will. Uh, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you feel like sharing your knowledge would would benefit our listener group? I think that one of the things that is important for whoever is gonna um, embark in a rebranding process is involve your stakeholders. Um, we had the opportunity during your side visit to, I wanted you to listen to everybody. Obviously you can't listen to, we can't bring everybody to the arena and sit everybody down, but we try to, <laughs> we try to uh, have representatives from like our stakeholders, our attractions, our hoteliers, but also our community. And so we cho chose several people in the community and not necessarily the people that agreed with us 100%. We wanted you to have that perspective from the super positive, the super champions of the destination to the people that they don't even think this is a destination. We wanted the whole array because at the end of the day, you're going to have to sell uh, the product to, to all these people. And they're part of the, it's, it's their city also. So they're part of the exercise. And so I think that's something really important to keep your stakeholders informed um, because the more champions that you have, the better the outcome in my mind is, 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 is going to be. And so that's the idea that we wanted to expose you to as many stakeholders and as many um, different opinions as we could. Yeah, great point. When we came out there, we had one of the most comprehensive uh, interview opportunities that, that we've had when visiting a destination where you brought in so much, such a diverse set of stakeholders to share their opinions and experience with us. I, I think you're spot on. Uh, that, that was really helpful to, to give us the information that we needed to, to work together on this rebrand. Uh, Eileen, it has been wonderful to have you on and, you know, I may hit you up again and say, Hey, let's, let's do another episode because this has been really insightful. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge, uh, with our listener base. No, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, anytime you want me back, I'll be here and thank you so much. And we're very, very excited about the process we're embarking in and, uh, maybe we can do a follow up of how things are going once we have our, our new, um, our rebrand. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think we, we should share the results at the end. We'll, we'll plan a follow-up for that. Very good. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, this has been another episode of the Destination Marketing Podcast. A couple of reminders for everybody. Your reviews really do make a difference on the amount of people that we reach. Uh, and we would love a review from anybody that's feeling like, they're enjoying the content we're providing on the podcast. Our listeners go up every week. Uh, we, we're, we're over 2,500 downloads now in the short period of time that we've been doing this, and we're excited to see that grow on a weekly basis. We also have a couple of groups that we would like to invite you to join. We have a LinkedIn group called Destination Marketers, and we also have a Facebook group called Destination Marketers. The LinkedIn group has a lot more momentum right now than, than the Facebook group does, but we're trying to grow both groups, create a community where people can learn and grow together as destination marketers. And really, it's, it's supposed to be a place where you guys can comment, share knowledge articles, and help each other grow. And we're, we're excited to be a part of that with you. So thanks, everybody, for your time, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.